Welcome back to Membrane Function in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to go over a relatively simple type of transport system called the glucose transporter. And glucose transporter, if we write this out, we have glucose transporter. All right, so for the glucose transporter, they basically usually, to abbreviate this, they take the first three letters glue from glucose and the T from transporter, and they just basically call it glute or glut, and then usually there's a number designation after this. So you have glute one, glute two, glute three, or glut, sometimes they pronounce it, and so forth, okay? And that's how you designate these. So there's different ones, and they're on different types of cells for different reasons, okay? Now, in this video, when there's one thing we have to assume, okay, this is the outside, this is the inside, but on the outside, this is where we have a really high concentration of glucose, okay? Down here in the inside of the cell, we really have a very low concentration because generally, once we get glucose into the cell, it's immediately phosphorylated to trap it, and it's no longer glucose. It'll be usually glucose 6-phosphate, so there's usually a negligible amount inside the cell. So notice, we're moving glucose inside the cell, so that's down its concentration gradient. So this is not active transport. This is actually passive transport. Okay, it doesn't require any energy because moving this through the membrane is already spontaneous. Okay, as a result of that, it's going to be a simpler system. Now, it's not just passive diffusion or simple diffusion. It's not that because it requires a protein. Therefore, this type is specifically facilitated diffusion. Okay, and that's because it requires a transport protein. Okay, so this is a, re a really simple system. It's not going to take long to explain it. But just keep in mind, we're moving from an area of high concentration to low, so it does not require input of energy. So this is glucose. This is usually how they abbreviate it, some little hexagon. It's going to go into here into this little binding pocket right here. You see glucose in there. When glucose binds there, it induces a change in conformation of the protein. This conformation right here is generally called T1. This conformation is T2. When the protein is in the T2 conformation, and glucose will be in there, glucose essentially can now exit. It's that simple. Okay, so glucose binds in this pocket. That induces the change in conformation to T2, and then glucose just simply exits to the, the side of lower concentration. And now that glucose is out of this pocket, it now returns to its original conformation, T1. Okay, so what exactly is happening? Let's, let's regroup this and go over it. So glucose, is, there's a specific binding site for glucose right there. Okay, glucose binds in that site in this transporter. And when it does, the transporter changes conformation in what we call the T2 state. That causes the opening now to be on the cytosolic side, and now glucose just simply exits, it just diffuses out, okay, because this side is lower concentration. Once glucose exits, there's no uh, reason for it to stay in the T2 state, so it returns back to its original conformation, T1, and then the cycle can ultimately repeat itself, okay, and that's ultimately how the glucose transporter works. Um, there are different glucose transporters, they're all abbreviated GLUT and they're given a number designation. For example, GLUT2 would be used for a different function than GLUT4 and so forth, okay? And in fact, the GLUT, recept the GLUT transporter that you have on your muscle cells, skeletal muscle, is different than the one that's on your pancreas or your liver for that matter, okay? So hopefully this makes sense. It's a relatively simple system. And remember, because you're moving down the concentration gradient from high to low, you don't need energy input. When we look at active transport, whether it's primary or secondary, we're going to need some energy input, and we'll see those in the future videos. But this is just straight facilitated diffusion because you're moving something down the concentration gradient, but it requires a protein, and that's because glucose is very polar. It won't cross the membrane by itself. On top of that, it's just too large to cross anyways. Okay, so hopefully this video made sense. This is how the glucose transporter works. Um, in general, if you, have, um, if you have things moving down a concentration gradient, they're all going to function very similarly to this. Um, they may have a different molecular basis, but in general, they're all going to sort of look like this. All right, so thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.